In the standing seam world, there's a lot of assemblies and system types that you can choose for your home or building. So we're gonna talk about a couple of those today. Nail strip versus clip systems. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett. Make sure you subscribe here. We release new metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. Today we're talking about nail flange versus clip system. And any of the questions we're talking about are in the description down below. You can jump ahead to any of those. Today I have Jeff Pock, the technical director from Sheffield Metals on the episode today. And Jeff, we're gonna start with the actual differences between the two systems and then we'll kind of jump into some more there. So tell me what a nail strip system is and then what a clip system is. All right, so a nail strip or nail flange system, it's again, it's a concealed fastener, standing seam roof panel. Um, it's a snap lock system. But the thing that sets it apart from clip, clip systems is that it does not use a clip. It has a flange on the male side of the panel that has holes cut out in it, uh, usually every six inches. It's a one inch slot. Every six inches it's punched out and you screw that directly to the deck versus a clip system, which has a metal roofing clip, either fixed or expansion and contraction clip. And that clip goes over top of the male leg and then that's anchored to the roof deck. All right, so here I have a 450 snap lock panel and this is a clip system. So here on the male leg, you can see this is where you'd attach the clip, which gets screwed down into the deck. And then the next course of panels would then snap over top of the male leg and the clip that's holding the panel down to the deck. Whereas a nail flange or nail strip panel, um, this leg here would have those uh, nail holes or screw holes that you would use to attach the panel to the decking. So out of the two systems, let's talk about residential. What, uh, what do you see as the most common or what do you see commonly around in the metal roofing world, nail strip versus clip systems? For residential applications, nail strips really popular because it's less expensive you know you don't have the you don't have the clip components so you have less components that go into the system so that should reduce the cost um, you know personally you know I, I, I tell people to be careful with the nail strip system just because I, I prefer the clips when it comes to standing seam roofing um, you know when you use a nail strip system you know, a lot of it's dependent on the fastener you're using. Uh, but basically, where you have two fasteners and a clip holding down the male leg of your panel and a clip system, you basically have the head of a fastener holding down the, uh, the panel in a nail strip system. And it's not that the fastener won't hold. It's just uh, when I have seen them fail, usually the metal rips around the fastener head. So, again, it goes back to engineering. It goes back to the area that you're located uh, to make sure that you're getting the right panel for your project or your home, uh, you know, especially. You know, you want to make sure that, you know, a metal roof's a large investment, whether it's a fastener flange or not. Uh, you want to make sure you're getting the proper panel that's going to perform for your location and your project. Uh, even the panel that you showed in the beginning with the clip, uh, that panel actually locks onto the clip itself. So that panel strength is dependent on the clip spacing. Uh, as far as it locking together, you know, some panels like the inch and three quarters, as far as snap locks go, they have a continuous locking uh, rib all the way down the panel. Um, the 450 snap lock, it locks onto the clip itself. So the uh, performance of that panel is going to be, you know, completely different at three foot than it would be at a one foot clip spacing. For sure. So, yeah, so even it, it depends on what specific clip system you're using when it comes to performance. Um, and then installation even can affect it big time. Talk to me about some installation uh, errors that may make a nail flange system fail prematurely. The one inch slot is designed so the panel should be able to expand and contract. Um, a lot of times guys will just suck that screw down as tight as it can go in the panel. It's you're basically gonna pin one whole side of the panel um, because it's not gonna be able to move. You know, another thing is, the ultra low profile pancake head fasteners are really popular to be used for that panel. Right. I don't see the I don't really see the purpose in that when you have a if you have a clip relief in the panel, the bump out by the by the male and female legs. Yep. Um, yep. because now to me with that tapered head of the fastener, you're basically now you're reducing uh, the amount of 
fastener head that is holding that panel down. So I think you're losing a little bit there. Um, the nail strip itself, when it punches the slots out, it doesn't punch and remove the, the one inch slot. It takes and kind of curls up around the back of the panel. Mm -hmm. So if you are handing panels up on the roof or you're sliding them around, um, those sharp edges could potentially cut the drying material. So you want to be careful of that. Um, you know, just, you know, obviously you don't want a bunch of holes in your drying and things like that. But those are those are probably the three off the top of my head that uh, I would point out, you know, first. Yeah, and we do have a video on how to install fasteners when it comes to a fastener flange or a clip system, and check that out. We did with Triangle Fastener Corporation as well. So let's move on to clip system. Can you talk to me about some installation error that can occur with a clip system specifically? Probably the main one is not using the right clip for your panel. Um, if you're using a snap lock panel, you're going to always have a fixed clip. But if you're using a mechanically seamed panel, uh, you know, depending on the length of your panel run and the engineering that you're going for, uh, you, you know, depends on whether you're going to use a fixed clip or a expansion clip it's on the seam, whether it's 90 or 180 degrees. We, you know, we always recommend 180 degree seams. Uh, probably the biggest one with the uh, clip, though, is not having the clip tight against the male leg of the panel. So you want that clip sitting tight uh, against the male leg of the panel. Um, to make sure that, you know, one, it's attached correctly, and two, you're not putting needed stress, any unneeded stress on the panel, creating pinch points, things like that. When it comes to actually choosing the system for your house or for your building, what are some options there as far as slope and then actual the assembly and profile choice between clip systems and nail flange systems? So a lot of it's going to go back to the engineering again. Uh, if it's a residential project, you know, more than likely it's going to be a plywood deck. So you have tons of choices there. Uh, you get into commercial projects, it might be B-deck, it might be B-deck with ISO. Um, so you want to make sure that the panel that you're looking at has the engineering that you need or that's required for your area, number one. As far as slope goes, it's going to be completely panel dependent on the slope of your roof and what choices you have. Snap locks in general, usually the rule of thumb is you don't go below a 312 with a snap lock. So you have snap locks on the clip side of the panel options and you have, you know, all the nail strips or nail flange panels are snap locks. So you're, you're, gonna, you're not going to use those panels on anything low slope. You're gonna, if you get a low slope, you're going to get into a mechanically seam panel um, as far as that goes. Uh, nails, nail flange options, you really have a choice of two panels when it comes down to it, and the main difference is the height of the male leg, or excuse me, height of the panel seam. Uh, you know, the typical is one inch, and your other option is inch and a half. Um, when it comes to clip systems, you can have everything from a one inch mechanical panel up to a two, two inch mechanical panel with, you know, a wide array of choices of inch and a half in between, and then you have an inch and three quarter uh, snap lock version as well. So what about panel run? Uh, what's the maximum uh, recommended lengths for nail flange versus a snap block or a versus a clip system? So clip system panel runs, again, is going to be dependent on the type of panel you're using, whether it's snap lock or mechanical, and the clip that you're using. Um, you know, typically with mechanical seams and fixed clips, you don't want to go over 20-foot panel runs because anything over that, you're going to start getting into the thermal movement and with a fixed clip, you're not going to be able to accommodate that thermal movement. Um, with mechanical seams and expansion clips, uh, your panel run is basically limited by the amount of movement in the clip. So say if you have a 100-foot panel run and that equates to 5 eighths inches of thermal movement, um, you have to make sure that the clip that's engineered for it is going to accommodate that, that much movement. And most of them are. Most of them you have at least an, uh, an inch of movement in each direction. So you okay. can get some pretty long panel runs when it comes down to it with mechanical panels and the right clip. Nail strip panels, you know, there's, there's, there's different frames of thoughts on it. You know, typically I hear 40 feet is the maximum you want to do with a, uh, a nail strip panel. So um, that, that'd probably be the max recommended length that I would say to go with a, a nail strip panel. Okay. And that should cover most residential applications when it comes down to sure, it. Sure, sure. So what about materials? Can both systems use a wide variety of metal materials? They do. Um, you know, 26 gauge is popular in residential applications, again, because it's a little bit cheaper. 
Uh, but again, it all goes back to the engineering and what it's uh, what it's been tested in. You know, if you product's tested in 24 gauge and you put a 26 gauge roof on your house or your project, that engineering is not valid. So you know, your standard your standards in metal roofing you'll see anywhere from 26 gauge to 22 gauge when it comes to standing seam. If your if your panel's engineered in 24 gauge and you go to 22 gauge, your engineering is still valid because it's a heavier material, it's stronger. Um, it's not going to void your engineering. The same isn't said if you go lighter. So if you go to a lighter material, then your engineering is not valid anymore. But 24 gauge is, is pretty much the most common uh, material that we sell and that, uh, you know, the gauge that you'll see on most projects. The same thing with colors, you know, obviously the material type and the color isn't going to be dependent on uh, the panel itself. So, you know, your color options are all available no matter which panel you choose. When it comes to environment and typical weather that a location gets, let's say a uh, high wind, hurricane prone area, you know, which system choice might be better for an area like that? Again, I'm going to defer back to the engineering uh, from your manufacturer. Uh, make sure they have it tested. You know, here in Florida, you have Florida building code, you have high velocity hurricane zones and non high velocity hurricane zones. Uh, you have different spacings as far as your zones one, two, and three. It's, it's not really a one-size-fits-all answer. Uh, it's going to be dependent on the style of your roof, where it's located, the height of your roof, and the system that you're wanting to use. Uh, you know, we have, there's a lot of manufacturers down here locally that test specifically for Florida. You know, and they'll do things that uh, are probably a lot more stringent than you wouldn't see in other areas of the country, you know, as far as testing with a peel and stick which will help reduce the pressure during the test. They'll, uh, you know, see, even seeing people go as far as uh, installing c uh, glue in the seams of the panel to keep them together for the higher pressures. So it really wow. is dependent on uh, what it is that you need to meet and the, what the system's able to offer. You know, you might be limited in choice based on how, how much a panel needs to perform, depending on, you know, the area that you're in. All right, well, thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. I hope this gave you some insight on the differences between a nail strip versus a clip system when it comes to standing seam metal roofing. If you have any more questions, please comment down below. We'd love to talk to you and subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel, as always, on Thad Barnett, and we'll catch you next time.